This episode is sponsored by the IoT Job Site, the world's only dedicated space for applying for and advertising IoT vacancies across the world. Register now for job alerts or get in touch via Let's Talk at the IoT Job Site.com. Hello and welcome to the IoT Podcast. I'm your host for today, Brad King Taylor, and today I'm delighted to be joined by the CEO of Smart Textile Alliance, Christian Dalsgaard. Before we get into it, as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast because it gives you all the updates on the latest releases. So, Christian, obviously, absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I suppose the best place to start for the uh, the viewer's purpose is to give us a little bit of an overview of of your background in the in the smart textile industries. Sure. Yeah, and thank you for inviting me to this uh, I, uh, I post podcast. I hope we can um, make uh, it enjoyable, enjoyable for the for the uh, listener. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Christian Delscore. Uh, I have a long background in uh, uh, electronics. IT started out in companies uh, part of the AT and T. So I have been in laboratories. Uh, uh, the whole <laughs> uh, 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 of my career. Um, in 2004, I established a company, Omatex, uh, which uh, was pioneering in the field of smart textiles. Um, I had a degree in uh, electronics, um, IT, and saw that many of the um, laboratories at uh, the chip manufacturers, Intel, uh, Infineon, uh, Philips, they were all uh, trying to uh, look into the future of miniaturized electronics and then how that would uh, impact the way we see uh, new products. Uh, and I thought that uh, making uh, electronics into garment would be a natural step uh, for a lot of the things that we wear, uh, watches, uh, yeah, even uh, the, <coughs> the large boxes that are on the wall in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> So, so uh, I, I established Omatex and we were quite successful. Uh, uh, had a contract for the European Space Agency in 2009, working with astronauts and very exciting work. Um, and that has actually been um, a lot of the, uh, the platform for doing uh, sophisticated um, electronics into to textiles. Uh, I stepped back from the company in 2019 uh, I have been in U.S. for a year, um, and I thought that uh, yeah, the founder was necess not necessarily needed anymore. Uh, we had a good management set up, um, and I had uh, um, a thought that were that a lot of the uh, scalability issues that we have seen uh, actually came back to the lack of uh, uh, plug-and-play components, uh, industry standards. And therefore, we established the Smart Textile Alliance, uh, which is a non-for-profit organization in London, with the aim to join companies together to create a common uh, solution for interconnectivity so that you don't necessarily need to build everything from scratch. You can build uh, your electronics independent on which garment it's uh, intended for, whether it's a firefighter uh, uniform, a, a police uniform, or even a sports cloth. <clears throat> the processing device and uh, the the um, uh, content of a, a PC B board is basically the same. It's about reducing battery power, uh, and you know the, all that from the IT IoT world. Uh, so that was impressive, and that was uh, inspiring for creating a Smart Textile Alliance. Yeah, and and to be fair, you just used the word that I wanted to to say. I think it really is inspiring. And we came across you as a company and what you're trying to achieve is amazing. I think it's probably good if we now start to familiarize ourselves with the, with the current climate, um, the, the current market overview in, in the smart textile sector and, and where we, we're seeing the most successful application um, of the smart textiles. Yeah, sure. Uh, you need to look uh, the full verbal market, which is uh, 70 million, billion uh, dollars. Uh, the smart textile market of today is only around $500 million. However, a larger and larger part of the verbal market would uh, include uh, some kind of uh, textile integration, whether it's in straps, uh, t-shirt, uh, jackets, uh, sleeves, uh, socks. So um, 
I imagine that um, this 500 million US dollar, which is the current market, would uh, expand uh, over the next uh, coming five to 10 years. But in this uh, 500 million uh, US dollar market, the main applications are heated textiles, meaning uh, you can wear a battery, you can be in um, rural areas, uh, become clo uh, cold, and you can support uh, <clears throat> this uh, weather uh, extremes by uh, actually in power in your jacket or powering your sock devices. And that appears to be the most uh, common application uh, now for smart textiles. Although uh, the sports sector is <clears throat> highly uh, growing uh, with application where you measure your muscle activity during exercise, uh, you can also track your motion um, so that you can optimize your shoot when you're in a football game. Uh, and, and in, in all uh, areas where fitness um, occur, it's good to understand the, the, the heart rate, uh, good to understand uh, your respiration and, and track that um, also with the people in your surrounding, with the colleagues, with the friends, and uh, use it as a benchmark and motivation, motivator. So that's the, 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 main, the main market is the heated garment, uh, sports area, sports apparel, it's following. And then clearly in the future, we will see a lot of uh, healthcare applications. Yeah, perfect. And um, knowing me as well, like I'm glad you brought that because sport has always been a huge part of my life. So seeing things like this now is just mind blowing for me. Um, I play a lot of football, a lot of golf, and, and this can help a uh, not so very high standard, I'll be honest, um, but I play it nevertheless. So people that do play that high standard, I think this can be almost game changing for them. So it's great. Obviously, all these sort of things, um, nothing ever comes easy. So I'm keen to understand a little bit more about the challenges that you're seeing in the smart te textile sectors. Um, and you early on, you referred to the scalability. So it would be good to see how you've overcome those issues as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one of the main uh, challenging currently is that there are no uh, standard, uh, no universal connectivity standards. Imagine um, USB uh, on computers before USB actually exists. There was proprietary solution for uh, connecting a printer uh, and, and you need to deliver both the printer and the computer. And that could be an IBM for example, uh, and that really um, uh, had the, uh, a, a bottleneck in the expansion of the market. Uh, similar, we see similar things here now in uh, the smart verbals. A lot of solutions are proprietary. I think I want to show this uh, as an example of a connector solution. Amazing. It uh, fits very well. Uh, I hope you can see. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It can be snapped. It can be snapped to a. a it can be snapped to a t-shirt. Uh, however, uh, even this is uh, washable and uh, can support the data as well as power. Uh, since it's a proprietary solution, it, it, it cannot be reused in other application. And therefore, every uh, time the connector is developed, it's just an add-on to the cost and um, that, that create a bottleneck currently. So uh, one of the main issue is to um, actually event or find, uh, establish a solution so that you have a, a interoperability between the electronics um, and can utilize your uh, power on, uh, on garment and integration of the sensors and uh, all the things that uh, you say are new to the uh, new to the, to the electronics industry. Yeah, uh, amazing. And the fact that you obviously you've noticed the challenges you're working towards overcoming, uh, overcoming them, that's the, that's the main thing. So look, we have a, a good overview of the industry now, which is great. Um, and, and the viewers would appreciate that. But let's talk more about the Alliance, right? That's that's why you're here, what, yeah. what we're interested in. So um, <laughs> going into a bit more um, depth on that, what is the Smart Textile Alliance? Where does the inspiration come from? Um, <clears throat> the inspiration actually comes from uh, the history about the USB, about Bluetooth, uh, Wi-Fi Alliance. 
uh, industry was uh, that was lacking uh, uh, standards, and uh, I'm not here talking about um, um, uh, governmental standards or <clears throat> or prescriptive standards, but really industry solution that the companies agreed on. Um, so and and the way they these standards have evolved and the technology have been <coughs> uh, widespread is because uh, there have been an agreement on established a not-for-profit organization that can um, advance the specification, agree on the details in the specification so that companies uh, that actually want to use that technology can have a say. And the, the way it also works is that if you signed up to this organization, you will automatically uh, gain a, a IP right to use the other members' uh, technology. So in advance of putting your own um, IP right into the pool, you will get access to the full spectrum of, of uh, USB or Bluetooth. And that's a huge advantage for, for everybody. Yeah, um, so it, well, yeah, huge advantage. And, it's about building those networks, right? And it's the same for anything, anything that we do. It's, um, and that's why podcasts are so good because, again, it's just another way of, uh, of growing the, of your network and sharing your message and all that sort of stuff. So the fact that you um, are working with that sort of ideas as well is superb. So the, how is the Smart Tech Alliance related to IoT development? Obviously, we are an IoT podcast, if you like. Uh, to a certain extent, so yeah. how, how are you related uh, as, a, as a company to that? Um, uh, the, the smart textile technology has a huge uh, in common with IoT, miniaturization, uh, miniaturization uh, batteries, uh, autonomy, um, cloud solutions, uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, so you can say from the technology side that it's a huge uh, uh, <coughs> link between the IoT world and the, the smart textile world. Um, at the moment, we, we don't have any um, a link uh, to IoT other than what you have been invited me to, to participate in. Um, and uh, I, I hope that can be, that can be developed, um, sure, because there's... Uh, uh, a lot of uh, similarities in the way the the industry develops. Yeah, uh, uh, develops is a is a key word in what we all do uh, in in this uh, crazy sector. You whether you're developing some sort of software or you are the the industry itself is developing, growing, ever changing, right? Um, and that's that's one of the key things in, in different things. So. Um, yeah, I need I need to emphasize that the Smart Textile Alliance is not doing any develop ourselves. Yeah. So we're not a development yeah. house. Uh, we <clears throat> we are a hub for for creating these uh, highly needed uh, standards or, or plug and play solutions that uh, can uh, be beneficial for everybody. Yeah, of course. And I, well, that leads me straight on to the next question. So, what is the Smart Textile Textile Stack? Um, and how is the Smart Textile okay, Alliance helping yeah. support product development? We um, uh, doing during the years that I have worked with Smart Textiles, I have seen uh, a lot of um, uh, you can say um, logical separation in the way that the supply chain work. Uh, uh, textile companies, uh, yarn manufacturers have a huge uh, manufacturing setup for making really, really impressive uh, conductive yarns. And they are good at that. And I think they should keep being good at that. So thinking of how you build a, a smart textile product by having a layer with the fabric and the fibers uh, interconnected to a layer where you can have a <coughs> universal connector and this in uh, this universal connector can uh, be uh, attached by a, a, a platform of electronics, whether it's a, a sensing device, um, a device that uh, uh, work as a <coughs> a connectivity between a Bluetooth uh, or a Bluetooth connectivity to a smartphone, 
or whether it's a, a solution actually goes directly to 5G. The, the importance is that uh, you can separate the layer of fi fiber and fabrics to, to the connector la layer, to the, um, to the processing layer. And, and on top of that, uh, it's also important that to know that uh, everything you do in the smart textiles world ends in a washing machine. So that's that's <laughs> simply a condition. And today you will not see any electronics that are washed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, except uh, with uh, with accidents. But but uh, normally uh, your clothes is washed fifty times, and therefore there is a handling layer uh, that needs to take care of how you treat your electronics. Uh, uh, separate it, dispose it, um, uh, what kind of uh, ingredients can be used in, in relation to integrated sensors and how is it displayed. Um, today you have symbols, icons in all your clothes, uh, but there are none that uh, actually prescribe how, how uh, a sensor-enabled um, jacket or, or, or shirt uh, should be, be treated. So that, that's part of the uh, work also to, to have a layer on top of all the tec tec technical layers uh, which take care of um, uh, care and handling. Yeah, Lay layers is such a big word in everything that we do. Uh, there's always layers. Um, I can see that being clipped uh, for when we do the build up to this podcast. You're talking about pretty much everything you do ends up in a washing machine, uh, which is a, a great quote. Um, so obviously with, with everything that we do, there's standards, right? It's one of the main things that everybody has to focus on, industry standards. So I'm keen to understand how the Alliance um, advanced and helped improve industry standards. Mm. Uh, currently, we are in an infant state. Uh, mm. We were established uh, in 2020. Uh, we have uh, struggled uh, being... I'm, I'm located in Denmark. I, I'm Danish. Uh, we mm -hmm. have our... Uh, the office in London uh, during the pandemic there was uh, travel restrictions that uh, were limited the, the ability to to get people together mm. uh, but I hope uh, this autumn um, we have we have a group of uh, ambassadors who have um, signed up to support our mission I hope we can advance that group uh, we can um, also make a common um, uh, uh, work uh, attempt uh, to 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 agree on on a direction for for standards, especially on the connectivity and mm. the, the interoperability. Uh, and uh, I expect that uh, this uh, autumn would um, would be a kickoff of uh, some of that work. Yeah, good. Um, and you you kind of touched on it uh, briefly for the, for what you're hoping to achieve in the future. So. Uh, obviously, the past is the past. We're a little bit more um, able to do things now. So, like you said, with your meeting, but what are you forecasting for the smart t uh, tactile sector in the coming years? And how are you looking to support the innovation of, the, of what is a growing industry, right? Um, uh, I, I can't prove it, but I see uh, that all the wearables that we are wearing today, watches, um, uh, belts one in another way the next logical step in that evolution would be that it becomes part of something that has the character of uh, textile whether it's a stretchability uh, probability uh, or whether it can be weird uh, as part of a t-shirt um, and therefore uh, both because that you can have a much higher currency on your measurement if it's a muscle activity monitoring if it's a oxygenation monitoring a saturation uh, EKT everything becomes more accurate in the moment where you can integrate it into uh, things that that is uh, commonly uh, understood as a, as a garment so I think there will be a natural uh, next evolution of wearables uh, that um, include more and more uh, elements from from what is known from fashion and uh, and textile which can also uh, increase the user experience of these type of product you can uh, 
create the elements that are known from fashion in the way you express yourself, in the way you uh, you like uh, product and like wearing uh, things. Yeah, and and everybody, I say everybody, everybody should, um, especially in sport and things like that, should be wearing clothes, right? <laughs> so um, it, no. it's, yeah, it's going to be good for... Um, I th- I'm thinking things like injury prevention and stuff like that for for high level athletes that there's still the issue there understanding their 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 muscles and their blood flow a little bit better in terms of yeah yeah, that sort of yeah. Stuff. there's there's obviously they're, they're, all these people have really strong teams around them to to try and help prevent and massages and, and, and therapy and that sort of stuff but I think this can take it that little bit step further would you agree? Uh, yeah, it's a way of. Um... It's a way of uh, creating uh, tools uh, that uh, give you a better insight uh, to whether it's your respiration, uh, cardiovascular capacity, your muscle uh, activity. <clears throat> uh, having uh, instrumentation uh, have always always uh, gain in fact in in the way you understand and um, be able to to coach and 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 train and optimize your your performance so 100 percent, yeah yeah and this is why i love what i do and uh, and everything the conversations that i have and some of the technology that's out there at the moment we're in a fortunate place where uh, cardiac arrests i think you touched on on cardiac uh, it's become quite it's, be, it's a more of a thing now especially in football um so this is why just little things yeah. like this can can make all the difference and it's exciting right it is it genuinely is exciting um so thank you for a start for, for, for this sort of stuff. So yeah. Um, look, before we end the podcast, as always, Christian, we like to, to go back to a, a previous guest and get a question from them. Um, in this instance, it is uh, okay, Roy, yeah. Roy Dagan, uh, who was the CEO of security things. Um, he wants to ask you, how do you see the supply chain lag evolving in the next two or three years? And what tips do you have for companies looking to fully demand in the market? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I understood the. I, I can see the 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 supply chain, but was there a security element in this? Um, I don't think so. So I think it's more about like um, driving the applications and uh, and how we can benefit maybe the end users and um, it's just just little things like that potentially in yeah. in how we can help fulfill. I, the I think um, I think uh, that. Um, um, Unfortunately, it would be mainly electronic companies mm. that are driving uh, the growth of smart textile, uh, and that would influence the, the supply chain. It would be medical device companies that, you can say, expand more into soft uh, products, and th- therefore, um, I think the main, the main um, value ch- chain or the main part of the value chain would be electronics companies, but but they need to be supported by electronics, um, uh, by by by, by um, yarn manufacturer, fabric manufacturers, and then I think uh, you would say if you take the uh, uh, electronic uh, supply chain in the middle, uh, you'll have some add-on uh, in the beginning, which is fiber and, and fabrics. And then you'll have a new add-on in uh, at closer to the consumer, which is the apparel industry. Mm. Um, so that the branding of products, uh, the way you normally think clothes, uh, sport brands, will adapt these solution that uh, is uh, supported by the electronic uh, industries and uh, electronic developers. Perfect. Um, and I've got one final question. I know naturally a lot of the stuff that I've referred to and spoke about has been sport. That's just me. <laughs> it's just who I am. Uh, I, can't get, <laughs> I can't get away from it. But I'm going to ask you a question that hopefully um, it might, if we, if we take that, that sector away from things, what's either one sector that you personally, Christian, want to have a big impact on or you see this being a big impact on? Uh to what um, uh, to what I have seen, I think the motion capture is so interesting. Being able to understand your exact uh, shoot, uh, being able to understand how you uh, how you behave when you're doing exercise, 
um, and being able to track the exact, uh, you can say, motion. Um, clearly the muscle activity monitoring, clearly the uh, vital sign doing these exercise is also um, interesting. But being able to fully track how you move uh, when you're doing a game or game uh, and how you can optimize your um, uh, posture, uh, I'm confident that that would, uh, that would be uh, a fun and huge uh, advantage uh, for, for athletes and, and people that are serious about uh, their fitness. Amazing. Um... And health. Yeah, I, I, I'm truly excited about where this can go. I think it's, I think it's brilliant. Um, I noticed that you, uh, you naturally went to a darts throw. Is that your game, or is that just what you, you tend to use as an example? <laughs> do you play darts? Sorry. Do you play, do you play darts? You, you, you went straight for the dart throw on the, when you started that. Oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> just your example that you use. Uh, look, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Look, again, thank you so much for coming on. It's been, it, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, um, thank you. And. and as I've said a couple of times already, I'm genuinely excited about where this can go. So, um, yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Um, the final thing, as always, is uh, if you can just give the listeners um, direction in terms of your socials, your website, that sort of stuff, and where they can find you. Yeah. Um, yeah, look into um, smarttextilealliance.com uh, uh, um, or Google it. Uh, we are the only... Uh, with that name on the internet and that will give a, a, a great inspiration. You can definitely also look into our ambassadors uh, which is include which include the Danish uh, Technological Institute, uh, Fraunhofer, uh, F4, uh, very competent institutes that can uh, help you with printed electronic, with a sophisticated way of uh, doing a system on on, on flex um, uh, manufacturing garment. Uh, so the ambassadors, uh, the, the group of ambassadors is a, a very unique uh, place to start. And we also have a supplier directory where you can look for components um, and uh, specific elements that can be used in, um, uh, in smart textile. And it's all trusted suppliers. So we know what they do and we describe uh, in, in, in good detail uh, what you can achieve by using these uh, off-the-shelf products. Brilliant. Uh, and a good way to wrap up. Thank you so much, Christian. And uh, it, I appreciate you coming on and joining us today. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And have a good day. And you take care. Enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> As always, make sure you like and subscribe to the podcast. We want to make sure that we're giving you all the relevant information and updates on when the latest releases are coming. It doesn't matter how you're watching, where you're watching, as long as you're watching. Thank you, and until next time.